have no time to lose. Carr and Lois are undoubtedly on ship number three. Range 1082, angle of elevation 13 degrees, direction alpha 19 degrees. Ten seconds from now, target reaches coordinates. Minus nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Fire! that when you're watching a TV show, especially sci-fi, or anything that might have that one element that we could recognize as old, have you noticed that there is not a way to justify what we're watching, no matter how interesting the content might be, the moment is ruined, yes, and we can find those little things easily in obsolete sci-fi. It doesn't have to be too old, but mostly in old school sci-fi. That's why I mentioned it. That's why I mentioned the genre. Because, you know, it is a pretentious and destructive detail. The simple fact of computer screen, I guess, being a little bit thicker or thinner, or not anatomic enough, or what have you. Maybe just too impractical in whatever way it might be. And having in mind that science fiction is usually identified with some form of representation that is supposed to reflect maybe a certain kind of future and whatnot, you know, it tends to find ourselves just laughing in those moments. I mean, a lot of things go through the same process when we rediscover them or found them after a certain time. When time has passed to the end, man, an old writing or an old book that was supposed to tell us a notion of the futuristic ways where we found humanity doing this or that. I don't know. A simple note or poem that we wrote who knows when and now for whatever reason has resurfaced in our lives and it's just too damn obsolete, even if it is only dated a few years or a month ago. Especially in these days, galloping fast and faster <laughs> and not always conceptually. Of course, in the same way, we also love to encounter coincidences, I know, I know, the mention of meaningful predictions and so on. But the other case is the one, and correct me if I'm wrong, the case where we found the defect is the one we tend to encounter more often. Wrongness happens almost always to any possible prophetic piece when time goes by. Talking about time, I have to clarify this, always avoid it as much as possible to turn this podcast into a time capsule. I don't know. This is something that I've been doing <laughs> pretty much from the very first time I decided to write something or to make a drawing, whatever. I really didn't want to attach that particular creation to any timeline. For that one reason I mentioned earlier, the uh, stupid thing that happens when it <laughs> becomes obsolete. And I've been doing my best to not be attached to any particular timeline in the case of this podcast. That's, uh, you know, not mentioning names or dates, what else? Certain particular events or news uh, were happening and are happening around us all the time, like a terrible pandemic and been doing my best, like I said. For that matter, anything that can circa anyone in some future that may or might not encounter these recorders, hopefully, <laughs> you know, giving the reader or the listener the notion of when this podcast was done is the thing that I've been trying to avoid and just keeping it as global and as timeless as possible so I tried to avoid a lot of that but I knew that at a point, at some point I would not be able to do such thing because things happen so I kept that dynamic as a gentle rule as a good measure to make this experience as timeless as possible I'm gonna be saying the word time so many times <laughs> However, what I was trying to get to is that uh, today is going to be different. Sort of like a continuation of what happened in the last episode where towards the end I broke this 
cardinal rule is personal law of uh, being timeless <laughs> and I just had to bend a little bit because it was needed. So I'm going to continue doing that a little bit more relaxed this time. The reason is because I want to say a few things and I'm going to be referring to something very special and very peculiar that has called for my attention. It has bothered the hell out of me to be honest and it still does. And I know I'm not the only one who has been through this, so I speak for all the ones that are affected for this strange phenomenon, I could say, and uh, share the same feeling of frustration in various degrees, but frustration nevertheless. I'm talking about the nasty... <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even feel comfortable using the words that have been so used lately, uh, you know like strongly, nasty, or what's the other word? Uh, tremendously. <laughs> I'm talking about the nasty surprise of realizing how different is that thing that we understand as common sense for different people. I know that each one has a perspective, but common sense is supposed to be that halfway that we all meet, right? We are not required to leave behind ourselves. It's just if you feel that an interaction is part of what you need in this existence, why don't we meet halfway? And in that particular field, the ratio in relationship with other people ended up being so incredibly different. And I'm not talking about anybody, I'm talking about people we care for, from friends to authors to, I guess, anyone. It is happening a lot in different layers of the intellectual spectrum, no doubt about it. And it's reflecting society without a freaking boundary, affecting to many of those we believe, I believe, at a point to be in the same page with me, at least. Not in every detail, but you know, we didn't need to be in the same page like 100%, but you know, the main alignment of reality was always somehow considered a common ground where we could find each other. I could find certain individuals and their ideas. They were there. There was no delay and starting from scratch and trying to find if we had something in common. No, we did. Well, not anymore. Right now, we have people that we used to believe in their ability to be clear, very clear about anything, about what was going on in the everyday that we share. And even, we could say, some of them were people that we used to go for advice and all that. And right now, it's just bullshit. I mean, it's amazing the level of stupidity in what I used to consider dear friends of mine. Some of them are exactly the opposite of whatever I knew them to be. And some of them inspired me things that I didn't even know at the time, and they were a representation of that, and no longer. I don't even need to be concerned with the fact of maybe I'm saying too much, too little, too soon, or caring about having someone complaining with a cliche expression of, Oh, uh, you shouldn't, this or that, whatever, you're assuming, what and what not. I don't give a shit. I don't need to even waste my time in considering shit like that. Because uh, it is like the most obvious situation ever. Like having a very congested high-speed highway with a lot of traffic. And for a long time, me and a group of folks that I thought I knew were there trying to cross the street. That very congested street. And we knew it was not a good idea to do that when it was so busy as the cars were going by and all of a sudden one of us says, No, it's fine. You just have to believe. Yeah, you hear that and it sounds stupid. Let's say I hear that. To me it sounds stupid. I would say that's ridiculous. I am not going to do it. And then I would probably ask who you've been talking to? Who's been telling you that? Who told you this is a good idea? Please tell me. <laughs> probably the response right now would be like, Oh, what? Are you assuming that my group of friends? Why are you assuming that my group of friends? You shouldn't assume. No, I'm not assuming shit. <laughs> what you're saying is crazy. So I'm hoping that you you're still the person that I believe I knew, the person that is intelligent enough to decipher what is and not a good idea. I really want to believe that someone else is doing this to you and you're just maybe too good. Maybe your soul is such a good soul and you have such a good heart 
but you just choose to believe in whatever someone you like or want to fuck is telling you and that's the reason why you're doing what you're doing or maybe you're just the victim of whatever and you need to belong to some group i don't know what's happening in your life obviously i don't whatever it is that has changed you into this stranger that is talking to me right now but i want to believe that it's not you you know it's like when white people is saying the world is being racist to us shut up you bitch shut it seriously i'm talking about friends of mine that used to be i don't know if they still are i don't give a damn producers of a very intelligent electronic music and art and technological gadgets and science in general stuff that requires a clear mind visionary type of platform you know in order for you to be able to be credited with those things well those ones are saying incredible nonsense these days crazy i said yeah not all of them of course but specific ones that did not show symptoms of being that level of bullshitters or insanity or whatever you know the ones that I don't know. I didn't expect this from them, especially if not from them. And then you have the other ones, the one that recently had kids or a few years ago and their kids are teenagers or whatever. Again, not all of them. But there is a portion that are fucking insane telling me that eventually we need to sacrifice ourselves because the rights of the children and my boy will not use a mask to cover his beautiful smile because my boy is gonna be a great man and he needs to show the way he's growing. Your boy is gonna be a great man if he can remember this time as someone who was helping. That's gonna make him a great man. That's going to be something that he's going to be able to talk in the future and say, yeah, I was one of the ones that were actually taking care of everybody else, taking care of myself, my family, and being aware and conscious about what was going on. This is a great time for that. If I was a kid right now, I had to wear a mask. Who gives a shit? I don't even remember the shit that I used to do when I was a kid. Such a stereotype of annoying madness. Some of my <laughs> friends have become. I mean, seriously, it's just amazing one thing after another come on and those are the people i used to go to say hey have you noticed the lunacy among us and now these fuckers are part of that insanity so that's what i'm going to be talking about have you been through the frustration of finding out that family members and people that used to be part of your most precious social environment are right now simply no longer what you thought they were well i have and you know what i doubt it but I really hope the people I just mentioned are listening to this episode. If ever they have listened to the podcast, I don't give a shit, really. Some of them called me recently to tell me, I want to apologize that I was so wrong at a point. And now that I realize that I was wrong at a point, I want to give you this new amount of bullshit where I don't think I'm wrong, even though you just proved me that I've been wrong so many times. So, come on, enough is enough. Okay then, I'm going to just begin by saying this. Wake the fuck up, alright? Let's start the show. Welcome to the astronaut nature. <laughs> How about that, eh? Yeah! <laughs> So this is the episode number 12 of The Astronaut Nature and today we're gonna be making it short from this point on at least because that was a long ass intro I understand some of you might be thinking that and I agree but it was a needed one because I had things to say and I imagine that the result of that might be somebody a little bit upset perhaps someone's being offended by my strange and long rant I really don't care. That annoying long list of cliches about you shouldn't be treating me like that or this is too much or you are too rude or whatever the heck. I am not any of those things except that I am depending when, whom and what and in any case it takes one to know one so yeah. People's been rude, people's been racist, people's been a lot of things. And so you were and are as well. It is amazing how many times somebody can be so freakingly not empathical and out of touch and assuming, really assuming that other people are assuming or whatever. Some of us have reached that particular moment when we need to analyze 
and some others are just whatever they are. And it's really interesting that there is always that moment when they tell you, oh, you think you're the only one who has suffered? No, I'm not the only one. That's why when I say the things that I say, I am sure that there is an understanding. Otherwise, why would I even waste my time? If there is not empathy, there wouldn't be any reason for any particular discourse. That's for sure. But empathy is not something that you choose to have. It's part of our programming. Volcanism startup, 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 startup. And now you heard the startup, which means the computers on board are now in control of terminal count. That's correct, Daryl, and we should be hearing the final go here uh, from the team. LD uh, go for XP launch. And there we just heard launch director giving the go for the XP launch. Uh, so things are beginning to uh, ramp up here, and uh, we will see that the vent valves get closed. The team is ready to go and uh, XP will be on its way here in about 30 seconds. seconds. There is always a certain group of people going through the same struggle over and over again and always blaming everybody else, everybody but themselves. And I'm not the kind of person that will guide you to self-blame, but I do believe that you will find something else after you realize that there is a common thing about your presence in the world and whatever is going on around you, right after that realization, you are in a clear condition, or you probably should be ready to at least have the curiosity to explore a little bit more whatever is going on. And you will find that it's not about you being the one to blame or somebody else, but it is that there is one piece of information that you are dealing with at a time and whatever library of knowledge and sensation you're exploring in whatever moment is the thing that will determine somehow where you are. And that's what's going on here. I have already explained what is the theory about the many libraries that we have access to and why certain things are so ridiculously unexplainable and yet so present in our behavioral interaction. And we're going to refer to one of those in particular, but not today. Today is going to be the end of this episode. We're going to be having a lot to discuss in the next one. It's going to be very interesting. So, I'm going to say goodbye, and thank you so much again for participating with uh, me in this moment of I don't know how to describe what I'm doing here anyways thank you so much for being there and I'll be with you guys in a few days I promise you there's a lot to talk about and I cannot wait to do that but I will wait <laughs> bye thank you okay and here we go 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 Three, two, one, ignition, and liftoff. We hear that the launch vehicles cleared off, and we're hearing nominal chamber pressures on all nine Merlin engines.